Okay, so next up on our list is the smoothing capacitor. So I showed you why we need the smoothing capacitor and kind of see where it is. So the first parameter that I think is important to consider whenever you're sourcing your smoothing capacitor is the voltage rating of the capacitor. Maybe you don't know, or maybe you do know, that capacitors have a voltage rating, which basically means if you put a... Uh, once the voltage drop across the capacitor's terminals reach, exceeds a certain value, the capacitor itself will just like blow up and it'll break and it'll stop actually working. So we need to pick a capacitor with a voltage rating that's higher than the maximum voltage rating that it's going to have to endure. So it's actually pretty nifty. We already calculated what the maximum voltage on the input's going to be, and that is 375 volts because per specification, when you rectify our VN max of 265, you get 375 volts. So that's the most, that's the maximum voltage that our capacitor should have to experience. So whenever you're sourcing capacitors, find something with a voltage rating that is greater than 375 volts. The next important calculation to consider is the capacitance of the of the capacitor right this is going to control how much smoothing it's able to actually do like how much can it pick up those valleys and how much can it suppress those hills right those crests how smooth of a signal can it give us and this this is not like we're not how would i say i mean we're sort of looking for us like the the basically the trade-off here is the the smoother the signal the easier it is for our controller to handle Right. We don't want our controller trying to, to control a signal that's just like all over the place, bouncing up and down, like you're skipping a stone across a lake or something. We want a nice, smooth, consistent signal for our controller to be able to modulate. So basically, the, the standard here, the rule of thumb, is that you want 2 to 3 microfarads per watt of input power. So, so far, it's pretty smooth sailing. We know that our input power is 7.4 watts because we already calculated that. And based on that, that calculation, we know we want about 14.8 microfarads to 22.2 microfarads of capacitance on the input. Um, and that's honestly, that's, that's pretty much it for our input capacitor calculations.